Lauren Simmons was the youngest female trader to work on the NYSE floor. She was only the second black woman to ever do so when she took a job at Rosenblatt Securities. Men around her used to bet that she couldn't pass the Series 19 exam. Well, she did. And she now also has two TV shows in development, a podcast and a book in the works. Bloomberg Wall Street correspondent Shanali Masak is with us now. And we have Lauren Simmons to boot. Shanali. Thank you, Vani, and thank you, Lauren, for joining us. You know, one of the things you had mentioned to our colleague Kelsey Butler is that some new people on Wall Street might be frustrated with some of these diversity efforts and start to look elsewhere, start to form their own companies to work. Do you think that Wall Street remains an attractive place to work on, uh, to work for younger talent? Attractive place? I think, you know, Wall Street has definitely established themselves as, as a goal to want to achieve, but I do think the lack of diversity over decades, um, anything past 2000, anything is, is unfortunate. And I do think that we will see a lot of, especially Gen Zers, just creating their own firms and they're going to make diversity and inclusion a top priority. Yeah, Lauren, it's hilarious that, you know, anybody would have thought that you mightn't be able to pass the series 19 exams and so on, because, of course, if you if you want to, you'll study for them and pass them. What other roadblocks did you have, you know, in, in your early days, let's say, and, and even now on Wall Street? Uh, roadblocks? I mean, again, back to the series 19, it, it's an 80 percent fail rate. The handout that you're given doesn't have that much information. It's the book that you want to study from. And prior to the exchange being public, the exchange floor used to be private. So many men on the trading floor never actually really took the exam. They would buy a pack of beer and would, you know, give it to the test administrator. And that's how they would pass. So anybody new coming onto the floor, it's difficult because you go around asking questions on what, what might be on the test and they could not give any insights mm -hmm. on what the test actually was. So to be able to pass was hard and, and only able to be due so based off of your merit, based off of actually studying right. that book, which was very thick. Lauren, <laughs> there are not a lot of people like you on Wall Street, young, black, and female. You know, when you're looking at, uh, you know, the men that do run Wall Street, what is some advice that you have to give to them on what they can do to recruit more young uh, black women onto Wall Street? Yeah, they're going to have to be okay with putting themselves in different scenarios. Obviously, how their recruiting process over years, centuries has not worked to get different type of talent. And so they're going to have to go out to, they can, you know, find people in, in New York, they can find people in middle America, but they're going to have to stop with the traditional going to Ivy Leagues and, and picking from a certain demographic and and as well as talent trying to apply for jobs they're going to have to put themselves in uncomfortable situations and go beyond their mind and be able to apply for jobs that are outside of their comfort zone and i just want to give a shout out here to martina edwards of bank of america who was the first black woman to have a role on the floor of the new york stock exchange as a trader so talk to us about how you began your company and and really why you decided to do this particular role in the first place uh, so i you know came from georgia i decided you know i really wanted to live in new york that's very much a mindset after you graduate new york or la and for me, I was open to opportunity. I ended up meeting a gentleman who worked for Goldman Sachs. He was African-American. And he told me point blank that, you know, Goldman Sachs wouldn't hire me. And he didn't really give me any clarity as to the reason why. Um, but he said that he would um, introduce me to a colleague that worked at the New York Stock Exchange. And would I be interested in an equity trading position? And of course, for me, I was thinking, you know, minimally, this would be a great opportunity to work for the New York Stock Exchange, build my resume and to do something else within finance. And I met Richard Rosenblatt and he's, mm -hmm. you know, the best mentor, still the best mentor. Yes. And he hired me right. on the spot. Lauren, you're about to write a couple books here, <laughs> maybe develop a TV <laughs> show. What do you want to accomplish? 
Next. What do I want to accomplish? Um, I'm, I'm just so open to new opportunities. I'm so grateful to be a producer on a biopic on my life story, as well as uh, being a producer on two um, unscripted TV series, one coming out spring 2021 that I can't wait for everyone to see. More announcements will come. But I, I just want to continue to trailblaze in areas that, you know, minorities aren't often looked at and, you know, open up the door for more opportunities for more people who look like me to come along and, and say something that they are really passionate about, but going above their limitations. Lauren, did you enjoy your time at the New York Stock Exchange? Would you, you know, would you consider doing it again? Would you uh, advocate for others to do it? I enjoyed my time on the trading floor for what it was. I mean, the reality is I was only making $23,000 working at the New York Stock Exchange. That's not enough to even breathe in New York City. If I had to do it again, I still had the mentality that if I worked for the New York Stock Exchange, this would be a great foundation to lead me to better opportunities. And of course it did, but I don't think that is the story for many people, you know, that come to the New York Stock Exchange. You know, most people under the age of 30, they do come to the trading floor thinking that this is gonna be a platform or a gateway to other great opportunities. And the reality is, is that equity traders are slowly, slowly, slowly dwindling and the job itself is, you know, algorithms and way more passive. So the opportunities that you would get once before just aren't there. Yes. So for financial reasons, no, I don't think I would come back and I don't think I would, you know, advocate for people to go to the trading floor. But I do think, you know, being in a space within the financial industry and getting paid what you're worth I would definitely tell people to go out and do that well, and make sure that they're passionate about what they do. 